Darren, and today we've got a special treat for you. I'm going to do a sous vide pastrami, and I'm actually going to use the uh, recipe that's on Amazing Ribs. I'm going to go ahead and put a uh, card up here for it so you can click on that. It'll take you right to Amazing Ribs website for the, for the uh, pastrami recipe. But first, before we can make a pastrami, we got to make the corned beef. So we have to go ahead and brine this big brisket I got. So it's a 12 pound brisket. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and trim a lot of this fat off of it that you see, but it's a good size 12 pound brisket. It'll probably be about 10 pounds when I get uh, done trimming up all the fat. Uh, I went ahead and got my brine mixture already ready so that I can, when I get it all trimmed, I can have my brine all ready and I'm gonna throw it in this pan. And it's gonna take about seven, seven to eight days before this is done brining. So I'm going to put the brine recipe down in the description below, and I'm also going to put a card here for the corned beef uh, recipe, the brine recipe that's also on Amazing Rib. So two separate recipes, one's for the corned beef brine, because you can't make pastrami without corned beef, and then I'm going to uh, go ahead and have that up here so you can click to it, follow that recipe. So let me go ahead and trim all this up. There's a lot of fat on here, uh, and when, when we sous vide, you're not gonna render a lot of the fat. So I need to go ahead and trim a lot of this off, and then we'll have our brine all ready. I'm gonna go ahead and start the brine. And um, be right I got my pot of water ready. It's about a little over, a little under two gallons of water. Since we're gonna have like a 10 pound brisket, you need about a, a gallon of water uh, for every four or five pounds. So I got almost two pounds or two gallons of uh, water in here and I got my brine mixture. Um, like I said, I'm gonna, I, you, there's a tag uh, card uh, right here for the brine mixture, but uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put this uh, in the water. I got the water heating up. It's at the, right on the medium heat right now. It's just starting, but I'm gonna go ahead and put some of my brine mixture in there. And I'm not using uh, the pink salt. I'm actually using product from Morton called Tender Quick. It's a little bit different than the pink salt, but the instructions are on the back of this. It's a, it's like a tablespoon per pound of meat that you use. So I've already got that mixed in my brine mixture. And I'm gonna go ahead and put this in here. And what we're gonna do is let this heat up some and we're gonna stir it up in there and make sure all this brine salt and sugar and flavorings and pickling sauce and pickling uh, spices are all mixed in there and then we're going to go ahead and after we trim up the brisket we're going to dump this water right on top of the brisket so I'm going to go ahead and finish doing this okay, guys I'm just going to show you I trimmed up most of the fat off of the brisket and it was probably a good two pounds so it's right down to a 10 pound brisket now cut the big chunk off on, on the back between the point and the uh, flat and one thing when you're trimming a brisket, you need a real sharp knife. And uh, I just bought this uh, Tiao Fiery Phoenix from Amazon. It's a nice uh, boning knife. It's real sharp. Um, make sure you just get a really good sharp knife when you're doing this. Don't hurt knife. yourself. Using a dull knife or a cheap knife can actually get you hurt. So I like the Tiao cutlery line. Actually got a carving knife too in the same uh, same uh, edition. Uh, got some other knives on the way for me. But as you can see, I got the brine still going. And one of the things you might want to do if you guys ever like to, uh, when you sear steaks or any kind of roasts, if you ever like to use a little bit of beef tallow, when you're trimming a brisket, you can actually take some of that uh, fat that you're uh, taking off of there, you're trimming off, and render it down and then use it to cook in. Um, it's really good when you're searing a steak or you're searing a, a roast. You use it just like you would uh, bacon fat or olive oil or butter. And it actually gives that beefy flavor back into the steak. So I'm gonna render some of that down so I can have it for later. But all right guys, I'm gonna go ahead and finish up getting the brine together. And I'm gonna throw the brisket in the brine and I'll just be back. Just a quick note guys. Um, you don't want to throw this brine in when it's hot or warm. You want to make sure you let this brine cool down some. You don't want it to start cooking the meat. So it's always good to just let it sit here and cool or you can add some, add a bag of like ice or something to it uh, inside a baggie and 
let it cool down some before you put it on the uh, on the brisket because you don't want it to start cooking it. So just let it cool down before you do it. All right, I'll Got see you soon. Brian cooled down, poured it over the uh, brisket, and I put a little plate on top because brisket does float. And it does have a lot of fat in it, so it's always good to put something on top of it so it stays under the brine. I do have a little rack underneath it so it keeps it off the bottom of the pan so that there, there is some space underneath it and on top of it. So we're going to go ahead and stick put some plastic wrap on top of this and we're going to stick it in my refrigerator in the garage and I will see you guys in about seven days to see how this thing looks. So I will see you then. I got it all out and I'm going to go ahead and put some pastrami rub on it. Um, I made this up. The, the recipe is going to be down below. Uh, I made this up um, previously because I like to make these every once in a while. So I already got a big uh, big thing of it all ready to go. And then I'm going to put it in my expanded um, vacuum bag. And then we're going to throw it in the sous vide. We're going to do a 24 hour sous vide on it at 160 degrees. So I'm going to go ahead and get all the rub on it. So and show you. I'll be back. I got it all rubbed up. A nice uh, peppery, paprika -y, salty pastrami rub. So, got a rub down on both sides, pretty good. Then I'm going to go ahead and put it in one of my expandable vacuum sealer bags. And we're going to double seal this um, on both sides just to make sure. Like I told you, these double, these uh, expandable bags, you can either double and triple seal them just to make sure. But once I get it all vacuumed up, I'm going to throw it in the sous vide. And then we will be back tomorrow, and we will throw it on the smoker. Hey guys, I just hours. wanted to show you it's all vacuumed up, put all the rub on it, and this sucker is ready to go in the sous vide. I'll see you guys in about 24 hours. Hey guys, I got my fire started here. It's almost time to uh, put the uh, pastrami on the grill. So I already got my fire starters all lit and gone. Charcoal's almost ready. I'm going to throw on some cherry wood. Just a couple chunks. Cherry, uh, I found, has been pretty good for pastrami. So I'm going to put a couple on right where the fire is going. It's three good chunks, and that's going to be good enough for, for the pastrami. All right, I'm going to get my uh, heat deflectors on, get the grates on, and in about 10 or 15 minutes, we're going to go ahead and let this get up to temp, and then we'll throw the pastrami on. So we'll be okay, back. Okay, I went ahead and I took it out of the uh, sous vide bath, guys, and it is uh, ready to get on the smoker. And since uh, it is a brisket, it does have a lot of fat in it, so there is going to be a lot of purge in the bag. A lot of that uh, moisture and uh, juice is in the bag, so just be prepared, prepared for that. Um, but as you can see, it, uh, it shrank down pretty good. So probably now it's about 8 pounds, or maybe even 7. <laughs> so um, I'm going to go ahead, since it's not going to be seared, we're going to be smoking this. I'm not going to pat it down, pat it dry like we normally would if we were going to sear something uh, and cook it real fast. So this is going to go on for some smoke. And when you're smoking something, the more moisture you have on it, the more smoke it's going to retain. So I will put a little bit more of the uh, pastrami rub on it, though. And then we're going to go ahead and throw it on the smoker. But I'm not going to bore you with that. But we'll be back when I put it on the smoker. Okay, our Big Joe is right up to... 250. Got some nice smoke blowing. So I'm going to go ahead and throw this pastrami on. And I'm going to leave it on this rack because it makes it easier for me to take it off and put it on. So it's uh, going to be in there for about two and a half to three hours. Getting some nice smoke to it. And it should come out nice and dark and a nice bark on it and then we're going to cool it off in the refrigerator so I'm going to adjust this, I'm going to keep it right around 250 shouldn't go any more than that I don't want it to uh, dry out or get the, the bark to get too dark so we're going to keep it right around 225, 250, I don't want it to go much higher than that but we'll leave it on here for about three hours and then we'll see you guys All right, in a few let's go ahead been on there a little over two and a half hours. It's looking pretty good. It's getting kind of dark. 
probably leave it on there for another five or six, ten minutes, and then we will take it off and let it rest for a minute, and then we will take a slice of it so you can see what it looks like. Then I'm going to chill it up, and then we'll cut it up tomorrow for lunch. So I'll be right back. This is the pastrami. Eight days in the making. This here was the flat portion. This is the point portion. So I'm just going to cut a couple slices here off the flat. A little crunchy there. You can just kind of see. Yeah, it did get a little crunchy, but it's nice and pink. That's the way pastrami should be. It's falling apart. Still kind of. Still very hot, so I don't expect it to. Uh, you can see that is pastrami for sure. Cut it this way. I think this is the right way. Yeah, this is the right way. So we're going to just take a few slices off of here just so you can see. that turned out. Gonna make some nice sandwiches tomorrow. So alright guys, that's it. That's my pastrami. And um, usually you want to let it sit in the refrigerator overnight so it'll uh, tough it up so you can slice it pretty good and cut it into sandwiches. So it's really easy to do. You can actually do it with a pre made corned beef if you want to. I prefer to make my own but um, you will uh, Start off with like a 12 pounder and it'll turn into about a 7 pounder when you're done after trimming the fat and um, losing the fat when you uh, cook it. So, but I'm gonna go ahead and take a taste. One bite. Mmm. Not falling apart in my mouth. And peppery and salty. Just like pastrami supposed to be. Mm. All right, guys. It's been good. It's been fun. Try this at home. Leave me some comments. Subscribe. Mm. I'm getting choked up on the pepper. Uh, go ahead and uh, subscribe and like this video. Follow us on Facebook. Follow us on Instagram. Check us out. Thanks for joining me. See you again.